What's up guys, thanks for tuning into Dot Slash. So this is a video about KDE Neon. It's been brought up in comments before, other people have used it. Since I started using KDE, I've been very interested in checking it out. This is a mix of a rolling release on top of a fixed release base. What I mean by that is this is built on top of originally Ubuntu 16.04, and now they just released today a new version built on top of Ubuntu 18.04 Bionic Beaver. Now the mix in between the two is that the base is a long-term release, but the desktop environment is a rolling release. So it's a mix of both and it's a little bit strange. So this is it running in a virtual machine. So I've just booted it up. I haven't done anything yet. And I just wanna have a look before I do anything. I'll always do this. So top, let's see, we're looking at 505 megabytes of RAM being used, 506. So that's actually okay for KDE. You can get anywhere between 400 if it's really stripped down, but 450, 475 to 550. So this is about average for a KDE desktop. And while I have this open, I can do this and confirm we are using kernel 4.15, which is of course what Ubuntu 18.04 Bionic Beaver uses. And also while this is open, you know what? I want to quickly show you, let's go into the sources here. Uh, sources, let's see, we have one, so that makes it super easy. So we've got the archive.neon.kd.org slash user bionic. All right, so I'm going to install this and I want to see what the difference is because I'm not quite sure how their repo is set up. So let me zoom out and I'm going to show you the info. So KDE, it is version 5.13.5, which is very, very new. Most other distros who are running an LTS version of KDE, if you will, are using 5.12. On Netrunner and on Q4OS 3.3, I'm also using 5.13.5, so not bad. You get some, some of the newer features of KDE. One thing being, um, you know, transparency is a lot of eye candy, but there are some performance um, performance improvements as well. So quick, quick look going through, there's not a lot that's actually installed, which is fine. I mean, it, it's a 1.7 gig download. So I would have expected a bit more software, but you know what? I'm completely fine with getting a, a very bare system. Uh, no qualms about that. I mean, it even has the default KDE icons and themes and everything, which is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. And like a lot of distros, like I, I really like Netrunner because it came with so much good software, but really that was kind of a personal choice for me too, because a lot of that software is stuff that I will install myself anyways. So kind of saved me a bit of time, but this is nice. The KDE Neon gives you like a, a blank slate to work with and go in and install whatever you want. So of course the discover software center here. So I'm just gonna run the installer here, which is, it looks like Calamari's, but it's actually not. It's actually Ubiquity and it's a new version of Ubiquity. It looks a lot nicer. So we're just gonna swing through here, set up the keyboard, set up software. Yes, download updates. Yes, install third-party software. Disk setup, I'm going to just have it completely overwrite what's on here now, which is an old uh, distro I'm not using anymore. Arco Linux D, yep, let's just use entire disk. There we go, we'll do that. So I'm gonna skip the actual install. I'll let you know how long it takes, but then I'll, I'll get into the actual version running on the machine. All right, so that took about 12 minutes, which is quite long, but to be fair, uh, just over half of that was downloading the updates and uh, installing them and configuring them and whatnot. So it, it took a little while. So I'm gonna reboot the machine here. So I find this really interesting to have a, an LTS fixed release 
base and put a desktop environment on top of it that is a rolling release. So you have your system stability in mind and what is happening here? This must be a virtual machine thing. Um, so you have your, your stability, your base system you know, in mind, which is great. And your desktop will keep rolling in as being the newest, the latest and greatest. Now, what they do is they keep all the KDE software rolling all the time. So if a new version of anything KDE related um, gets released, then it gets pushed out as an update, as opposed to, let's say, uh, Ubuntu LTS, you'll have whatever desktop you have when it's released. And that's what you have the whole time until the next LTS release comes out. So let me just log in here. Uh, just a quick look. What do we have? Plasma and Plasma on Wayland. That's exciting. So Plasma on Wayland is new and I wouldn't try it yet, but it does look promising. One thing that I'm kind of looking forward to is it's going to have the night color or the night light built into it. I don't know why they're not doing it on Xorg or X11. Um, you can still download and use Redshift, but it's nice when it's just integrated into the operating system. All right, we're finally at the desktop. No, we're not. I spoke too soon. Yes, we are. Okay, <laughs> so let's see here quickly again. I want to look at the terminal. We should hopefully see slightly lower RAM usage. There we go. So 474, so that's much better. Much better than the 500 and whatever we were seeing before. So this is what you would expect from a KDE installation. About 475, like I said earlier. So we'll quit that. Kernel version should remain the same, but I did do updates. So 4.15 still, great. This should still not really have changed. All the numbers are still the same. There is no, there is nothing newer that's stable anyways than 5.13.5. .5. And yeah, 97 updates selected, zero bytes. So right. So everything has been downloaded, but it hasn't been updated yet. So I'm not going to do that right now. What I want to look at is verify software. Still nothing, just Firefox, just VLC. So it's nice. The update I thought would have taken a lot less time considering um, there's nothing really on here, but it is what it is. Another thing I want to check since it is Ubuntu based is it does have Snap and it uses snaps, uh, the core and KDE frameworks five. That's, that's a shame. If you, if you've watched some of my older videos, you know that I left Ubuntu for several reasons. And one was that everything was turning into snaps, but at least it's just the KDE frameworks. And this could be, um, part of the, the desktop environment is a rolling release. So maybe they're doing it via snaps. But I want to look again and see if this has changed at all. Want to see uh, sources.list. So go in here. So we've got, yes, so archive ubuntu.com, bionic, ubuntu.com, ubuntu.com. All right, so it is using Ubuntu for. It's uh, system updates, the, the baseline stuff. And this one should be neon.kde.org, bionic.main. So the Ubuntu repos is where you're gonna get all your, your system updates for you know um, hardware and for just the, the base of the system, everything excluding the desktop environment. And then this repo here is where you're going to get all your updates for KDE specific things. So what do I think overall? I'm very interested. It is 
built on Ubuntu, which means it'll be stable, which means it has good support, and it uses KDE and the latest of KDE. So being that I'm on a KDE kick right now, um, I'm, I'm going to have to install it, I think. So watch out for uh, a hardware installation of this, and I'm actually going to see if I can get NVIDIA Optimus running. I've been hacking away at Debian installations to get it to work, and I've managed to get it to work. So I'm hoping I can get it up and running with KDE Neon. If you want to see if it works or not, I guess you're just going to have to subscribe. So, <laughs> so that's KDE Neon in a nutshell. Let me know what you think. I know, I know that KDE is already in the Ubuntu world with uh, Kubuntu, but this is a little different because Kubuntu is completely on the LTS fixed release train where this is a bit of a hybrid, a bit of a mix of both. I'm really interested to see how this will play out. So that's all for now. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see a part two on hardware and see if I can get the NVIDIA Optimus drivers running or not. So subscribe, like, share, and I'd like to give a huge thanks to my Patreon patrons, my executive producer, Duna Omorum, and also thanks to Carlos Arknos, Carl, George, Matt, Kit, Says, and Ronald. Thank you guys so much for contributing and making my channel possible. If you'd like to contribute, head on over to patreon.com slash dorian.slash. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bash on. <laughs>